What's up, everybody? Sensei Vegan here, and I have a special guest on the show today. This is awesome. Uh, this is my buddy Chris, and Chris, say what's up to the camera. How's it going, guys and girls? <laughs> Hope everyone's doing all right. And the cool thing about Chris is, um, it's like we might not see each other for like two months, yeah, and then we run into each other, and we're like, "Did you see the movie?" Nonstop, <laughs> and we can go for hours, a, yeah, for hours. So it's like really crazy how we connected. And I always say like when you have positive energy and you run into people with the same passion, yeah. it's just like an instant link. And that's why I wanted to do this interview with you a long time Thank ago, you. but everything comes when it's supposed you know, happens Absolutely. when it's supposed to happen. But um the great thing is Chris, you're a teacher. Yes. And when you told me that and we were always talking about comics, I'd be like, Yeah, dude, do you ever use, you know, comics you and implement that into your teaching? Because I know me growing up I definitely needed something that would hold my attention. But we're gonna we're gonna push that aside a second and go back to the childhood, because that's where it all starts. Of course. For me, it was Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. Saturday morning cartoons, comic books. What inspired you to get into the I always say the comic book culture or comic book realm? Well, when I was when I was younger, Charles, uh, my one friend Vinny and I always used to go to Joker Child, and I always remember having that uh, Saturday afternoon as my escape, and coming home to two older brothers that were always into sports and more adult level mature things. I was always seen as the little geeky brother with the comic book, and you know my mother and father always pushed me to keep doing things that made me an individual separate from my two brothers and my sister. So I like that aspect of it, but I think more of the creativity, pushing your imagination, the borders of your, uh, of, your, of your mind, I think that's what really did it for me. Because some of those things, the stories that I read, were just so incredible that right. when you see them as a kid, you just go, oh my goodness, adults think of this stuff too? Right. So at the same time of being the kid with the childlike wonder, I'm 33 now and I still am that childlike wonder. Me too. Me too. It was, for me, now, what what were your favorite superheroes? I know for me, it was Spider-Man oh, yeah. that got me into it. And I got to thank my Uncle Joey for that. Uncle Joey, thank you. You know, it was just, dude, I wanted to web sling so effing bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. So Spider-Man and Iron Man for me, who was it for you? Well, I mean, uh, I always talk about my, my group of friends, my one friend in particular, Mark Nichols from work. Um, my favorite comic book character of all time is Batman. I mean, cool. to the point where I have some memorable Batman paraphernalia uh, <laughs> highlighted by, I have a watch actually. Seriously? All where right. The watch, if you shine it into the sun, shines a bat signal. That is awesome. Onto like, yeah, it's that pretty cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. So Batman, I like the fact that him being human, uh, having just great knowledge, uh, peak physical attributes, uh, pushing himself to every limit, physically and mentally, and then, you know, being able to hold his own on the Justice League with, with people who are aliens, superheroes, have these powers that you almost think, why is he there? And then when they get into the fight, they all look to him. They look to him. And the greatest thing I love, see, I got into Batman and Superman as I got older. My uh, cousin Jason actually got me into Batman and Superman. And what I loved about Batman was the same thing you just said. He was just a regular human. Yeah. With, again, he pushed his abilities to the maximum level, but he was the most feared in yeah. the DC universe. <laughs> the thing with Batman, he would figure out a way to whoop you up, man, and that was the best. In the time. Yeah. He would go to that bat cave and he would sit down and he would figure out a way to kick your butt and that's what I loved about Batman. Yeah, yeah. Same, same thing. I mean, uh, the fact that they almost played into that in the Batman vs. Superman movie that if given time, he could actually hold his own and possibly even beat Superman. Well, he did in the animated film. Oh, the yes. Movie, the movie script, it had, it had great moments, but then it had moments where you're like, what were yeah. they thinking? You know, um, one thing I definitely want to say, you know, this, this interview is this, this, yeah. this is awesome. Anyway. We keep saying that we, we've been meaning to do this for such a long time. We, are, we were standing outside at like 10.45 and 11 o'clock at night, and both of them were like, we got to go. We looked back down, and it was 11.30. Yeah, it was, it, it was nuts. 11.30, man. Crazy. So, 
I'm looking at I'm looking at the movie and it was like uh, okay I watched the film you know the animated film I looked at the movie again some great parts and then when they said they were going to cast Ben Affleck I was like I don't know and then I start looking I went back and I started just reviewing some of his movies I told people look Ben Affleck is going to make an awesome freaking Batman get the chops. Get the yeah chops to do it hands down to me I think he was one of the best Bruce Wayne's and Batman. That fight scene in the warehouse, hands down, the baddest fight scene in any Batman movie. I think, anyway, that's my opinion. But um, it still did not, yeah, you know, it didn't yeah, hit the level it should have. What the amazing thing, I think, is between DC and Marvel is DC kind of gives you everything in their uh, trailers, in their promotional stuff, and Marvel always leaves that little hint of, you don't know what's going to happen in the movie. And I think that's the difference between Marvel and DC, and not even to the point where the little things Marvel gives you are the post credit scenes. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about major plot points of those movies. Uh, you know, Batman and Superman, you pretty much knew everything that happened. I mean, they couldn't keep Doomsday under wraps. A yeah. secret like that should be, yeah. that's the movie right there. That's, that's the movie. And I think when they put Doomsday in, it was kind of overkill. Yes. Because, you know, spoiler alert, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Superman if you haven't seen it, though, yeah. by now. <laughs> yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. But, you know, Superman has to die. Yes. You know what I mean? And I do like Wonder Woman. I really do. But I didn't think she needed to be in a movie. But I guess they had to find a way to wedge her in yeah, there. Yeah, to bridge the gap for that and Justice, Justice League. League. Justice League coming together. So, my thought process was that the animated movies DC comes up with are phenomenal. Why don't they get the writers that write the animated films to do the scripts for the movies? You know, uh, the only thought that I could have for that, Charles, is the simple fact of these actors have egos. And um, I think the fact that maybe some parts would be cut short mm -hmm. or other people would have a lot of air time with the movie. Right, right, right. With a cartoon, you could do that because it's just voiceover. And every, maybe just, everybody gets paid the same. But when you actually put Gail Gaddett, Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill... Jason Monoma, all in a movie together. He, um, the, the, the gentleman who's playing Flash. Um, right, right. I forgot the, his name, but I know exactly who you're it's, it's hard to manage all those, those egos. And that was the impressive part, I don't know if you agree with me, about Civil War. You had all those people touched down in one part of the movie Dude, for not was, very long. That was wicked. I mean, to see Spider-Man come in, then to see Ant-Man grow big, it was... That's, that's the thing, and this goes out to the actors. I'm looking into the camera. This goes out to you actors. You can have, let's say, 20 minutes of on-screen time in a movie, and your part is just bougie. I'm just being honest. You can come in and give a 30-second part and blow the roof off the place. Steal the scene. You steal the effing scene. I'm telling you, man. So it's not so much about the time that you have in movies. It's what, it's what you, you do. do with yes. What you do at that time. I think Gail got it in um, Batman vs Superman. I feel like she kind of did that. Whatever scene she was in, she almost stole the scene. Yeah, she, she definitely balanced that thing out. Yeah. Even though I was like, ah, oh, she didn't have to be in there. Yes. She came in there, and she whooped some butt. And yes. she did what she had to do. Very much so. Yeah, man. Oh, so we kind of skewed off, but we're going to kind of slide back on. So, again, kids at a young age, they need influence, they need inspiration. So how do you kind of weave the whole comic book culture into your teaching? Well, I actually, when Charles came over, I have a comic book that one of my students in sixth grade gave to me just now to read. Mm -hmm. And I think that this year, uh, amongst all my 12 years teaching now, uh, it's really at home. Comic books have really now found a place for me to teach with. Awesome. And it's to get kids interested in just reading. And I always tell them, we used to have a program in um, Jersey City um, that was called Drop Everything and Read. And you teach in Jersey City. Very Jersey, much so, right? yeah. Awesome. Next to um, Journal Square. So I have a very diversified um, student population. Right. And this one boy, he literally, the boy who gave me the graphic novel, came from Michigan two months ago. Mm -hmm. And he, the parents came in and told me he was going to be difficult to get to do work. And he is. He, he's, he's a challenge. But they said he doesn't like reading. And I challenged that fact awesome. because within the first couple days, he came up to my desk for something. I had one of my drawers open. And much like my bookshelf over here, I had nothing but comic books, graphic novels. Awesome. And he goes, you like comic books? I go, I don't like comic books. I love comic books. Wow. So he just wanted to read that. And to get kids interested in just picking up something to absorb words and how stories can develop. Because you could teach so many different things yeah. from plot uh, from 
from sequencing to transitioning, yes. uh, you know, that's a big, uh, you know, not thought of part of a student's writing is the transitions they have from sentence to sentence, paragraph to paragraph, and they see that on a scene to scene basis in the comic book. So it's just incredible to see them want to absorb anything you give to them because they found what we found when we were younger, just the enjoyment of whatever possibility is in your mind can happen. And I think that's the creative part of it. Dude, that is, I can't, I know like when I went to school, and it wasn't like I couldn't do the work. The work was, to me, it was boring. Yes. You know what I mean? You, you teach you the same thing from grade, first grade all the way up to sixth grade. You're learning the same stuff over and over and over again. But there was just something about comics. I always say comic book culture, the comic book realm. It would just take my mind to a completely different place. And that's what I loved about it. And, and the crazy thing is, my family never knew I liked to write. And wow. I would, yeah, I would write these little crazy stories about space and all this stuff. And I remember one of my sixth grade teachers actually uh, mentioned me something about that. But then I kind of like hid it away. You know what I mean? But I just loved, just, it would just expand my imagination. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's what I loved about it. And one thing, what I love about what you said is, you will take and basically you will find what can help a kid learn. Yes. And a lot of teachers don't do that. They just look, oh, well, this person's slow, this person's that way, and just push them aside. And I think it's a teacher's responsibility because everyone learns different. You know, it's amazing that you're saying this because I actually just had, maybe about a month ago, not just, but in, in a teacher's world, a month ago is just. Um, <laughs> we, uh, my lovely colleague, um, Danielle, and I were teaching about plot, and one of my students came up and didn't understand plot pyramid how it was set up with the exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. And I was like trying to find a book that he could relate to that I could explain all this stuff with. And he just couldn't do it. Right. And I opened up my drawer and I said, did you ever read any of these? And lo and behold, he did. And I was able to express all these different exactly. major educational points from a comic book. From a comic book, man. And it, and it wasn't even a recent comic book. It was a Frank Miller comic book. Right. Which was amazing I'm because it was it was in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, and that that that's another thing too. What people don't realize, even if you take a look at some of the older Marvel stuff, you know, like the sixties and the seventies, there's a lot of common issues, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Very a lot much of, so. Yeah, a political. lot of political and current events were in those comic books, and this is one thing I love, even with the X Men. X Men dealt with a lot of people are always talking yes. about like racism. I'm just being honest. Yeah. Everyone was different in there, and it was like they were trying to bridge that gap. And if you really looked into it, you could see what they were trying to do. They were trying to bridge that gap between, hey, people are people, no matter who you are and what you are. Yeah. We all need to get along and get together. And, and it's just like it's an amazing thing if you just sit down and you open your mind just a little bit, what you see in common. It's amazing. It, it, some it's of, some of the underlying issues, you're absolutely exactly. right, that could be involved in a story are just so amazing that... People think that it's meant for kids. No, it's meant for avid readers. Someone who wants to see the world through a different perspective. Different. Wow. See, what, guys, ladies, general kids, pets, everyone that's watching, this is what it's all about. So we're going to slide on to the next question. Now, as a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult, did you ever think that the movies would ever get to the level where they are now. And the reason why I'm saying this, okay, we... <laughs> we all remember Dolph Lundgren's Punisher. Yes. <laughs> we were all worried that this was going to go off the rails I very quickly. That. And you can see even better. I remember the Hoff. Oh. When he played Nick, Nick Fury. Fury. Oh my <laughs> goodness. What was up with that movie? Remember the original um, Hulk versus the Thor, and they brought Daredevil? Yes. Remember yeah, remember those things? Yes. But I was so, I loved that stuff, so I, I sat and I watched it. The campy Fantastic Four movie. I remember that. Oh, my goodness. I remember that. The guy who looked like he was in a rubber rock costume. He did, like he was made out of a rubber yeah, rat. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Tough stuff, but at least they had the, 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 the go get them to maybe just push the, the genre into the forefront, it. because if it wasn't, it was on the back burner. Maybe someone like a James Gunn or a uh, Kevin Feige doesn't take their chance on presenting this to a, a movie studio. Yeah. You never know. And yeah, it's, it's true, you never know. And again, I remember the old Spider-Man when he would throw his web like a big old cargo net coming out, remember that stuff. 
But it was just like, I get you have to build a foundation in order to build a yes. skyscraper or a, or a house or anything like that. So, no, yeah. though, I did not think to the level it's at now, where it's almost one every year, when we were maybe five years ago, now it's almost three every year. Yeah. And they're major hits. They're, they're pushing, they're actually pushing the box office. Yeah. You know, they're leading the box office right now. The genre is. The only thing I hope, and I'm sure that some of our fans would agree, I hope it doesn't get super saturated. That that that's the issue that I had. I mean, if you remember the whole collapse of the comic book market back in like '96, oh. and at the time, that's when I was heavily into writing, getting everything ready for. Because I, I published comic books, and uh, Vex terrific, comics, terrific, Vex Comics, terrific, awesome. Thank you, man. That's going to be another interview. We're, we're going to have to break that down as well. I basically turned my back on that whole thing, you know, Marvel uh, basically went bankrupt, and that's that's when a lot of the characters start getting split up, because they were selling them off yep. to, to, to make money. And they couldn't bring them back they together. They couldn't bring them back yeah. together. But um, I really didn't pay attention to that, and I just kept my head pointed on where I wanted to go, and I remember saying to somebody, you know, as, as time went on, I said, look, man, technology's going to get to a point where they're going to take these comics, and they're going to push and drive the a actual Hollywood. Yes. And if you look at Hollywood right now, all those actors want to be in those movies, See, man. See, the amazing thing to me is, I actually talked about this with another friend of mine. He actually moved into the complex a couple spots down, and he's a big fan of it, uh, comic book genre, too. Mm -hmm. That, you know, you have all these A-list celebrities doing these movies. An Anthony Hopkins as Odin. Yeah. Um, ben Kingsley as the Mandarin. One of these characters is going to hit, and they're going to have to start putting these into the forefront of Oscar nominations. They should. They uh, should. An, an Emmy here or there. I mean, because the simple fact that they really make these movies go. I mean, their oh, characters God. are pivotal to the movies. It's, it's, they can't keep their back turned to this. They're going to try, but eventually, man, one of these, like you said, someone's going to win an Emmy, someone's going to win an Oscar. I mean, Heath Ledger unfortunately won it, but it was post, uh, you know, humane or whatever he had he passed away and I right. think someone accepted it on his behalf. But that's that's a big part of the that's movie huge. genre. That they get keep getting these major actors. Yeah, and I again Heath Leather Joker will go down in history as one of the best ever. I mean, honestly I, I felt that he carried that movie. If the Joker wouldn't have been in that movie it wouldn't have Yeah, his whole thing, I mean, supposedly the script that was online that people have read it was the Revenge of the Joker, supposedly, for the third installment of the Nolan movies. When Ledger died, they had to fill it in with uh, Blackgate Prison and Bane, and they took the Joker out of it, but he, he really put up a protest with his brother uh, that they wanted it to still be about the Joker, but then Chris Nolan said, no, we're not doing it without Ledger. Right. So that was the, the axe on that, but you're right, that movie was... Phenomenal. That was a Heath Ledger movie. That was a Heath Ledger movie. That movie shouldn't be called The Joker, man. Yeah! <laughs> Seriously, yeah, some of the, I mean, some of the best lines ever come out of that movie. I mean, I still, to this day, I, I don't know what it was about the scene, maybe just the eye-popping scenery of it, the scene where he's in the tank, uh, when he's in the ship at the end, and he brings the mobster, and he has all the stacked money, and the guy says, what are you going to do with all that money? He takes a scar out of his mouth, and he burns it all, and he goes, the, point's not to, the point is to send a message. Yeah. It isn't about the money. It, it's just an amazing scene. That, like, it shows you how... Deep he went he, to yeah, that character. Yeah. It, it was it was insane. Go watch that movie again, oh. guys. You would appreciate it even more today. Um, next question we got coming up here. <laughs> we'll be here forever. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Machine gun style. Um, <laughs> what do you think is going to be the surprise hit uh, in a, in a box office? You know, we have Wonder Woman coming up. Don't forget about Guardians 2, what was an excellent movie. Terrific. Three times saw it. Wow. Terrific. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit behind. i got to go see it again <laughs> before Wonder Woman comes out. Then we have, um, what else? we got Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok. you got Spider-Man. Spider-Man's Homecoming. Coming. Homecoming. Uh, Dark Tower 2. That's Yes. Which I, is going to be interesting. Yeah. We were just actually discussing how there was a board game for that, and I didn't know, but I actually read the book a long time ago where I said to myself, wow, this is going to be it's going to be a phenomenal either made-for-TV movie or it's going to be a great movie. Right. I'm glad. This is, this is another great thing, too. And I think we'll have to get to a point with movies. And it's been done. It was, I look at Doctor Strange, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent movie. Very. And I don't think Doctor Strange could have done any better. 
but a lot of people had no idea that Doctor Strange was even a Marvel character. Really? Yeah, people didn't know what Doctor Strange was. It's the same thing, like, I always go back to Blade. I always mention Blade because I think still hands down, Blade was still one of the best Terrific, Marvel movies. Yes. A lot of people didn't I mean, know who Blade was. That, that was a movie that people didn't know started the, the superhero yeah, genre. Because they thought it was a vampire movie or something. That, exactly, that's yeah. what they thought it was. And then when they found out it was Marvel, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, dude. Constantine, no, terrific. same thing. I thought that was a that that has a cult following, but I thought that was that was terrific the way they did it, and they that didn't come back for it. That movie was insane. But the thing is, we as comic book fans, we know it has a huge, huge cult oh, following yeah. with that movie. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking it'll get to a point. Well, anyway, let's let's just stay on track. What do you think is going to be like one of the surprise takeoff? I don't movies? think it's going to be a surprise. I think that. I really think Marvel's hinging a lot of their storytelling mm -hmm. on uh, Thor Ragnarok. I right. really do. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for Guardians 2, but a lot of answers are still left out there out for questions it. that have been prevalent since Phase 1. Right. And uh, with the trailer, did you see the Thor Ragnarok trailer? I did, I did. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there to digest. A lot of stuff in there, too. But again... You have to go with the fact that Marvel's not showing you their whole hand. They're never going to. They can't. So they can't. there's going to be something in there that you're like, what? Yeah. I mean, the fact that Guardians, I think, had four post credit scenes. That's, yeah. That, that was, shows you the kind of information that's going to have to be put into either. I don't know if the Spider Man home, Homecoming can have stuff in it for licensing. this kind of. Yeah. yeah, because stuff is still divided up. They, well, think about it. It took them a while to even get the rights. To print Spider Man with the Avengers. Yeah. Because I think Sony owned, owned the rights at one point, right? Yes. Well, yeah, so it was now, now, that, now, I'm go now I went into further uh, investigation of that. They actually had a trade off with um, Marvel and Fox where uh, Negasonic PJ and Teenage Warhead and gotcha. Deadpool was traded off from Marvel, from, um, I forget the company that I'm thinking of, but Fox gave up Ego. And that's why Guardians was allowed to use Ego because they gave them teenage uh, Negasonic Teenage War. Wow. Yeah. And you know what happens too is you'll have these companies put on movies and the movies will like flop and they're like, oh, they probably all oh, this ain't gonna make money. And then since the movie didn't do well, they're actually able to sell that movie back to the original oh, company yeah. and they'll buy it. Well, yeah, the, you know, the thing that I heard and I keep telling my one friend Mark was uh, I read an article that Marvel is gonna pull Fantastic Four comic books off the shelves to lower the value of that property so they had no choice but to sell it back to Marvel right. and Disney. That's the company that I was talking gotcha. about before, Fox and Disney. So Disney um, will basically say, like, listen, wow. what we did for Spider-Man, we'll do for Fantastic Four, too. Mm -hmm. You clearly keep falling over your own two feet making those movies. Give the property back up. And I'm hoping that happens before, like, a, let's say, Phase 4 begins. I got you. Because then you would have all those properties in the house except for X-Men, which I don't think is coming back because... I really do think after um, Apocalypse and the X Men, uh, Wolverine, Logan movie, right. they're just they're they're in the right direction now. Fantastic Four just keep kept going backwards. It just yeah, it just kept sliding backwards, and you know everything in Marvel right now is building up to we all know the Infinity Gauntlet, Ugh. and you really can't do the Infinity Gauntlet. Fantastic Four are gonna show up in that yeah. thing, you know what I mean? So I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know if they're going to bring Fantastic Four, not even a full movie, but at least, man, bring them into something. I mean, you're going to have to have... A cameo role. Galactus. You're going to have to have... They did talk about the Celestials yes. in um, Guardians. Um, the Elders, too, where they're mentioned with um, the Collector yep. and with Benicio Del Toro's mm -hmm. character. And in this one, I, you, you said you didn't see Guardians? I did. I saw it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did you see the, the end credit scene where Jeff Goldblum was dancing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was supposed to be in Guardians too, but that's another elder. So they they do still have yeah. a lot to explain. But these properties, like you're saying, just put them under one house and give the fans. What, isn't that what it's all about? It's I mean, about it's all fans. about us going out to see these movies, and they just, just sometimes don't want to give us what we want. It's true. I mean, guys, I'm looking into the camera. I'm telling you, directors, producers, listen to the fans. These stories are already written. So quit changing up everything. I know some things aren't going to look the same on screen as they do in a book but stick to the, the source. script. And if you notice, the movies that stick closer to the script are the ones that are getting the hits. Terrific, terrific. yeah. The hits. So we, we've been there, we read all this stuff, so we know when you guys are fudging material. I around. mean, for crying out loud, how long have we been waiting for Logan to put on the stupid yellow costume? Well, you put him in it, well, it's kind of late now, but yeah. the next person that gets casted for Wolverine, 
put him in the suit. Or, or is it too late? If you didn't see Logan, that was a tease right there. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Anyway, you should have saw her already. But, um, Chris, okay, we're going to have to start narrowing this down. We're going to have, like, part two and part three of this all through the summer. This day. isn't even the tip of the iceberg no, when he and I talk it's together. Not, it's not. Um, so... Did you give me, you didn't give me your movie. You said you said Thor. Uh, I think uh, it's I think it's gonna have to be Thor. And plus, I mean, for me, I don't know how many comic book fans really love this story because it is a little out there for comic book standards in Marvel. World War Hulk. I mean, yeah. the fact that he's now fighting, I don't know if it's on Ska R, but that Thor and Hulk are gonna That's just gladiator awesome. style. Man. But see, this this is nothing. We had spoke about this the other day. These are films that fans want to see. Oh, God, yeah. You know, the whole, like, you see it in the animated when you had um, Hulk and Wolverine, which is good. Then we were talking about, like, who would want to see, like, the son of Batman or the Red oh, Hood? yeah. And it's like, I don't know why these studios don't want to take a gamble. If you stick to the comic books, if you stick to those animated movies and bring that to live action, I'm telling you, I man. I mean, the Red, the, what you just said, I think... A few of the best scenes I've ever seen in a in a movie, like a whether it be a real movie, a cartoon movie, um, the Red Hood movie where he's chasing the Red Hood after yeah, the scene, and awesome. Robin's with him. He throws the the batarang to wrap around his ankle, uh -huh. and he cuts it midair. And yeah. Robin says he's really good. I mean, that's a scene. Who would think that? Who would think, Who would think that? that stuff? And then the other scene wow. where um, Batman versus Robin, where they fight in the museum, the Court of Owls. And he messes up all those zombie owls. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, I would just, I would just, is that the one he took and he messed up his arm? Yes. Like, yeah, I just watched that the other night. Honestly, I've watched that scene so many times. Yeah, that was, wow, that was wicked. Or even when his son, when they were fighting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that on was the that roof. Was, yeah, on the rooftop. That was, I mean, the fact, going back, though, to the museum scene, like Charles is saying, he gets his body messed up and he's fighting these things that I don't want to spoil in the movie. If you didn't watch it, you really you should. You got to watch it. He gets messed up, and you would think that any other sane superhero who's getting as beat up as he is would run away. No. What does Batman do? Straight up pulls two batarangs out and just knuckles up ready to fight. And I was like, what? Yeah. Incredible. I'll I tell you, I'm a Batman fan to the end, dude. It's just, he has no, no fear in him. He, he just you know, goes. I just read a thing that actually said Sinestro thought he would be a great ally because he knows how to use his opponent's fear against them. Uh -huh. And I thought, wow, and that's a story that they should really look that into. That would be. That would be. Wow. Wow. So check this out. This is what I think the hit movie of the summer, just the hit movie of the, the whole comic book. Yeah, what do you think? Do you might, I'm thinking Wonder Woman. Really? This is my, this is my thing. And... We were talking about this not too long ago, and I heard some people saying, well, Wonder Woman is, like, she's not getting the same advertisement, okay. you know, and, and push. push. And I was like, wait a second. I see a lot of movies. In every movie I've seen, I've seen previews for Wonder Woman. And it's like they're pacing the trailers out. I do like good. the fact you haven't seen, I haven't seen Ares. What do you look like? I'm trying to avoid it. Right. But um, you're right, though. It seems like they're showing the same major scenes and Whatever trailer you exactly. see. Exactly. And Wonder Woman is a icon oh. for a character. So I think even that in itself is just like, I gotta see it. I gotta see it. And Wonder Woman right now, I believe, please, I'm rooting for DC, will get DC rolling in the right direction. So then I have a question for you now. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering because you're saying Wonder Woman's gonna be, you know, the hit of the summer or the hit of the next few months. Are you saying because your expectations are a little lower, or you don't know what to expect, it's going to be a hit that way? Well, I'm looking at the previews, because at first, my expectations, they weren't high. I'm like, because I know DC, and how, yeah, I know how DC does things when it comes to their movies, man. But then I started looking at the previews, I was like, hey, this is looking pretty darn good. They didn't rush it as much, they, Yeah, and I'm thinking, they're like, all right, we might have to take our time with this one, because they're ticking off their fans, and... They got to do something, or, or, or people, or your fans are gonna start losing hope. Basically. Yes, and then that, well, that's what my friend Mark and I were talking about. Marvel, he, these movies got to pay off eventually, and with Guardians not having major questions kind of answered, it almost makes the fan like, "What do I keep paying for?" But you keep going because you're that devoted. You're devoted. Fan. 
you're devoted. And I'll go see just about, not even, I'll go see them all. It doesn't, yeah. it can be bad. And I Here's still, my money, take it. Yeah, I'm just, I love, I love comic books and movies and any, any of that type, anime so much. So one more question about Wonder Woman, though, saying about that movie. I'm wondering, since it's the first real female-led and driven movie, do you think that they're making that movie for the reason of putting her in Justice League or getting women to come to the movie and getting women interested, young girls interested in comic books, maybe? Dude, I got a wicked answer for that. Y'all ready for this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this, is, this is my answer. And I, please, people, don't take this the wrong way. Think on what I'm saying. This is, because um, I was asked, I was doing a panel, and we were asked that question. And this is my, my biggest thing. Women should have had major roles in movies a long time ago. And Amen. I think it's, yeah, a long time ago. This makes no sense. You know, but this is, this, is the, this is the problem I have with it. Some of the roles are not even written for women. They're just like, oh, you know what? We're just going to throw a woman in there because that's what everyone Talking else is Talking about like the one with Tilda Swinton and Doctor Strange? A lot of, a lot, yeah, a lot of that stuff. Even... Like I was talking about, well, they did it was okay with Star Wars, but they're pushing them into these roles, and I'm like, I don't mind getting the role. Make sure that it's, it's written. It fits. Yeah, make sure it fits. Make sure the role is Agreed. written for the women. You know what I mean? So with Wonder Woman, I just think they took their time. I believe they wrote the part out. I think they're doing it right, and I believe it's going to be a hit. I really do. And oh. yeah, I, I'm again, I'm rooting for DC, but. Make sure the roles are written for the women and not just saying, okay, we'll you know. Squeeze them in there. Yeah, just squeeze them in there. Because you being a fan, me being a fan, when you're watching a movie, you're like, no. That's, yeah, it yeah, just doesn't like, work. It doesn't work. It's like yeah. trying to pound a square peg into a round hole. It's not, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. But, and going back to what you said about the source material, and I remember telling you this last time when we were having the conversation, my friend Mark said he was actually at the Iron Man movie where when Ben Kingsley came out and it was shown to the audience that he wasn't the real deal in the movie. I'm not going to say what, because just in case you haven't seen it, we've already spoiled a couple of movies. <laughs> but uh, he said someone in the movie theater stood up and goes, no, that's wrong. No, I'm not paying for this. And he went and went and got I his money back. I believe it. I believe it. Um, I know for me, one of the epic move, one of the epic parts in any movie was the uh, first Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Terrific movie. Man, when I, I saw Spider-Man web slinging through the building... <laughs> And he hit that double yeah. webs dude. I stood up and was like, yes! Iconic scene. You want, the, you yeah, want those I iconic scenes? I mean, the iconic scene that's coming out in Homecoming, they've, uh, you know, to say that they haven't gone overboard with uh, marketing this scene, where he comes and shoots into the, the, the top of the gone. building, and then Iron Man... Dude, are you kidding me? Like, I that's went a scene nuts. That people just want to see those things. Dude, though. Give I it to went, us. Yeah, I went nuts. When I saw that man, I went crazy. So I'm. It's amazing though how even when you still watch these things in our 30s, I'm sure some fans are in their 40s and 50s. You feel like a kid you again. Feel like a kid. Yeah, and going back to my first original statement, you have that childlike wonder, and you you never forget yeah, it. Yeah, you're never going to forget that stuff. I remember, and I still have it, because my uncle was he still he still even pushes me, phenomenal artist, and I think I was in like 11th or 12th grade. And I was in my room again doing my doing my writing, and I had some crayons and a big sketchbook. He came in, and I believe it was in my bedroom, I believe, and he drew me, you know, like a poster size, you know, like the, those big oversized sketchbooks mm -hmm. of Iron Man and crayon oh, cool. and, and, and Spider Man. I he still did have it in them. front of you. He did it right. That's in front of awesome. Me. And I still have it. That's awesome. I still have it. I got to actually put it in a frame, and that's from when I was in high school. But that's the, I mean, small things like that go a long way to a kid. Man. You know, I, I, I wish that we could actually bring it out. Uh, it's in my bedroom. My mother, um, God bless my mother, because she, I had a lot of different different avenues I could have gone down as a kid. And for her to really push me into art, I didn't, I didn't feel it until she actually gave it to me um, when I was in college as a gift. She retired from work she, when she worked at Port Authority, and I had drawn something when I was in kindergarten, finger paint. Right. And as a kindergartner, you don't really know what you're doing, nah, you don't. but I just was enjoying myself. And it was sent home, I got an A on it. So what does my mother do? She keeps it, she frames it. Yes. Now she had it framed in her work for however long, you know, in a 99 cent frame, $10 frame. When I graduated in college, she gave it to me in a beautiful frame. It's still sitting up there and every day I wake up and I just seriously, you know, 
I know I didn't go into the art avenue, Mom, but uh, I do want to thank my mother and my father for pushing me with having art because every day I wake up and that's a reminder exactly. to always follow what you love. You and follow what you love to do. Teaching now has taken that, that role in my life. I, I love teaching. I love being with kids. I love seeing the inspiration. I love being the inspiration. And um, I'll, never, I'll never stop with that because my parents never stopped with me. And I feel like kids need to have that inspiration too. Wow. You hear that? And that is where we're going to stop because it doesn't get any better than that. Thank Chris, you. it was a pleasure. Charles, thank you very man. much, man. And hey, we got sequels coming to this because we got Part a lot two. of stuff. Three? Four? Four? I think, yeah, we did a quad, <laughs> baby. But this is what I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot. You have a lot of talent. Thank you very and much. So do you. And listen, if you didn't read Charles' comic book, please do yourself a favor. It is terrific. It's a terrific read. Thank you. Chris. I no, seriously, I appreciate that because you read a lot of stuff. I do. I mean, you, you, like I said, sometimes I'm talking to you, I'm like, man, do I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> because you do, it's like, you know. I, I feel like I'm a nerd pushing on my glasses. Oh, uh, yeah, Charles. Me. Dude, it's funny because, okay, I'm going to end on two more, two things real quick. What's funny is I had a buddy that went to um, a con, right? I'm not even going to tell a con because, anyway, went to a con, first any con. Any con's good. Yeah, any con is excellent. And he's like, man, I thought I knew stuff about comics. Until I got there, and I didn't know anything. It's yeah. like, you know, that's what's crazy. So it's like, when I talk to you, man, it even it even pushes me to learn more stuff. We need to write something, dude. Ooh. We, need, we need to write something. I I'm love in, that I'm idea. Doing, I'm in a process right now. I'm working on two issues, getting ready for a show that I'm doing in Detroit. So we're going to work on that. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Again, I'm Charles Dixon, a.k.a. Sensei Vegan. Chris, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. I don't know what else to say, man. This this is, dude, comic book culture runs through our veins. Ugh. It does. It runs through our veins. And uh, I love how you inspire the kids because that, that's what I'm all about, too. I need you to come into school. Dude, I'm ready. I Tell, keep telling you that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, this is for your principal. You need to get us to come in. You know what? Honestly, you need to throw a comic book day Ooh. at your school. Have the kids come in, cosplay their favorite superhero, wow. and I guarantee you, you will be surprised nice. how that inspires the kids to learn. You will see things that will boggle your brain. I'm serious. So, Principal, please, I would be willing to come in there, get a few of my colleagues together, and we will come in there and blow the roof off that place. And I'm telling you, those kids will never be the same. Because remember, kids are the future, man. And they need to be inspired. And I guarantee we will put a smile on each and every teacher's face once we leave that place. So... Put that on your uh, on your list for things to get done for, for the dockets. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we would love to come in and do that. So, um, guys, thank you so much for joining us again. I'm Sensei Vegan, aka Charles Dixon. If you haven't done so, go to vexcomics.com. Support again, Chris. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Charles. And this is to be continued. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs>